on call 24 seven across the, the whale migration period. And we're here to help um, as many whales as we can, uh, whether they're entangled in commercial fishing gear or um, end up in the shark control programs up and down the coast. Some of these entanglements can take hours. So we've been on the water for you know eight to 10 hours at a time. So we tend to have six people, a captain, uh, an incident controller, and then four cutters, as we would call them. And then we can rotate through those guys because it's very, very tiring uh, when you're out there. And, and once we've found the animal, um, it's a matter of, well, assessing the situation initially. And then if the animal is quite mobile, then it's trying to slow it down. Um, so what we do is grapple or throw or attach large buoys to the whale that will help slow it down. And then we can approach the tail more safely because that's where most of our entanglements are. And then I start to make some cuts and hopefully disentangle the whale from the gear. So a lot of it is chasing whales up and down the coast, trying to actually find them. So someone might see them off a headland in, let's say off Coolangatta. And then we work out how fast the whale is traveling or estimate how fast it's traveling and estimate where it might be the next day, get volunteers out there to locate. And then once they see it, our team will go down and get on the water and try and find it. That's one of the, the hardest parts and that's the least successful part. Once we actually get to a whale, I think our um, disentanglement success rate is probably somewhere around 90%. Uh, one thing we like to let uh, members of public know that is if, if they do come across a whale that's entangled and it has floats and other gear on it, is to try and leave that on. The, the temptation is to cut those things off. But if we don't remove the entire uh, entanglement, um, it's sometimes a bit of a death wish for that whale because that rope that stays on the whale will continue to cut in, cause an infection and sometimes cause its demise. But if we don't have those floats and other things to attach to, then we can't slow them down and we can't get close enough to remove the entire entanglement. There's always room for improvement uh, when it comes to communication, especially across state borders. We have to work out how to um, work together on, on this problem. It would be great if you know, the fisheries all work together across state lines and make sure that people are responsible for their fishing gear and that they report gear that's gone missing. And in fact, if it goes missing in their presence, if they were able to actually put some sort of uh, GPS marker or something on that whale and that gear at that time, that would really help us to be able to locate that animal. We mostly get them on their tails because we're lucky that on this migration, the whales aren't coming to feed. So they're just traveling up to the warmer waters and they feed down in Antarctica. So in other areas of the world, they'll get a lot of entanglements through the mouth and around the head area, which makes it really difficult to disentangle because the, the animals are using their mouths to scoop feed and they end up you know, getting these crab pots and other things stuck through those areas. And we do see some animals that appear to have been entangled for quite a while. And you can tell by their body condition, how emaciated they are, by the amount of sea lice that's gathering on that whale because it's not swimming at normal speeds. And also how deep the, um, the entanglement cut is cutting into the animal's body, whether it be the tail fluke or peduncle. When we get to the whales that are in the really poor conditions, we'll see sharks that are trailing and and hoping to predate on it. So yeah, it's probably not the best way to, to sort of go, unfortunately. So there's a lot of times when we'll get out to an entanglement where we just think, you know, this animal should just probably be put to sleep. But unfortunately, the technology is just not there and that's you know, worldwide on how to you know, appropriately and safely euthanize an animal of that size. I think when you consider that there's somewhere between 30,000 and 40,000 whales that come past the coastline each year, the amount of entanglements is quite a small percentage. For us, I think every animal counts and such a majestic species and, and, and such an ambassador species for the entire ocean. I think it's everyone's responsibility to do what we can to ensure that they have the best life that they can have.